Thank you. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, and I'd like to uh, thank, you know, the, the, the buzzword this morning so far is leadership, and it's everywhere on the agenda. So um, I take this opportunity to thank uh, the WCB of uh, Nova Scotia for their leadership in organizing this, uh, this important day for us, for all of us. Uh, thank you to Andrea, to Paul, and the rest of the team. This is great work. Thank you very much. Um, when I started on the job and I was told that, well, you know, this is, this is a yearly event, as you said, but it happened two years ago. Uh, um, and they told me what it was, and they sent me, you know, a recording from the first, uh, the first um, fall federal forum. I said, this is great. This is, this is something we need to have with, as we go ahead with our modernization uh, exercise, this is exactly the type of event that we need to, to have. So thank you for your leadership, and it's, it's, it's very important for us. It's working, okay. Um, so I'm here today to, to talk about who we are, okay? Who's Jean-Francois? Who's, and I uh, will introduce others, uh, and what we do here. And, and, and I met some people in the room, and I realized that not everyone knew what the labor program's know, doing, or what, the, uh, what, what ESDC is doing in the, in the, in the sandbox. So I, I will explain part of this. And then as part of, of, of our, our leadership, you know, how do we plan to modernize what we're doing? Uh, and then moving forward, where do you want to go with this? Um, I must say, I would say that, you know, speaking of leadership, we have a whole new leadership in the, in the, in the labor program at ESDC, okay? Um, I've been there, I think, less than 15 months. My colleague, Jennifer Bordereau, if she, if she can wave, Director of Operation, has been with the program for uh, maybe a year and a half. Uh, Maggie Trudel Maggiore, who's, who's our uh, Director General, who's here, can, can you wave? Uh, just a year. And uh, I have a whole team, I'm looking at them on, on there, because they are w watching on the web. And uh, most of them has, have been there for less than a year or a year. Um, we have a new ADM, Assistant Deputy Minister, who started about, what, two months ago? A Deputy Minister who joined the program um, f uh, about a year ago. And we have, of course, a new minister. So the whole chain of command from, from everywhere is all new, but that brings new ideas. And uh, I think that's important. And uh, I, I think and we, you'll see it everywhere where, uh, during my presentation. So who are we? So Federal Workers' Compensation Services, FWCS, as you hear it in, during my presentation. So we are part of the labor program and part of uh, Employment Social Development uh, Canada. Um, as you heard, so we are responsible for, for managing uh, occup occupational injuries uh, within the federal government. Uh, as, as Paul and, and, and the, the CEO mentioned this morning, um, the, the goal is to, is to, to we're looking at, at the cost, lower the cost, and get people back to work as soon as possible or keep them to work when they get injured. So that's why we have the mission there to prevent and reduce the human and financial cost of workplace illnesses and injuries uh, for, for uh, federal emplo uh, employers, employees, and partners, and to have an effective program so that people, you know, if they get injured, they get back to work as soon as possible. So what's our framework? Framework is the um, Government Employee Compensation Act. You'll hear GICA, some people refer it to GICA, but I'll use the GICA term. Uh, it's an old act. It was implemented in 1918. And uh, so that act, this is, this, is, this is the act that we use uh, that covers 400,000 employees, federal employees from department, agencies, from crown corporations. Even the uh, staff from the House of Commons is, is covered by this. And how do we work? Well, we work with WCBs. And, and our relationship is governed by uh, bilateral agreements that we have with them. And so, so we will look at the, the form and they adjudicate 
the, uh, uh, the, the claim based on the rate and condition in the, the, their respecting province. And you know all of this because you deal with them very often. So this is where you see that the, relationship, the, uh, the, the key roles and responsibilities. So we provide policy program advice to employers regarding coverage and administration of claims. I'm director of policy, so we, I'm looking at, okay, how can we have a better system? And, you know, my colleagues from the operation calls me and says, what do you think about this? So this is what we do. We, policy interpretation is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, program administration, all the claims are going through Jennifer's, Jennifer's floor, the ninth floor uh, in, in Gatineau, and then it's sent everywhere across the country. Uh, we answer, of course, the financial stewardship. So we uh, reimburse WCBs for all the services and the costs that they, uh, they have to pay for, for injured uh, workers. And uh, we recover this money from the, the respective uh, departments. And, of course, we want to have as, as, as good data as possible. So we, we compile those data and performance indicators to, have the, to make sure the program works well. Um, we do NINMAR assessment, and uh, we also administer claims against third party. So, so you have an idea where, where we fit, what we're doing, um, and, but we're not at the federal level. We, 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 let's, let's take our head out of the sand, and we're not doing always perfectly, if I can say. So uh, it takes longer federal uh, employers and employees to report uh, injuries than other employees in the country. 50% of all the claims result in lost time compared to 27 for the majority of other employers in the country. And we know that the longer a person is, out of, is not working, the longer it will take for, for that person to come back, and the more expensive it will be for her or for that person and for the employer too. Return to work, uh, stay at work. Um, after discussing with, with all the WCBs, um, the federal government is not doing great at this, and this is something we need to look at and we need to improve. So, I was talking, at, I was talking about the, the federal government at large, but us, FWCS, we need to modernize and improve our business practices. And we should not have our head in the sand neither. Um, we're done, um, so so in, two years ago, we did a review of the, uh, of the FWCS. So how can we better manage GECA? How, how can we work with this? And, um, and, and that, was, that was a broad consultation with employers, employees, unions, WCBs were also consulted. And what we learned from this is that um, paper base, faxes, mail. Um, we have an ADM who once said that we should unplug all the faxes. <laughs> you know, that would be, we, we wouldn't have the choice to, to send everything electronically. Uh, and of course, working with paper increases delays, which increases costs. That's so, so that's a vicious circle there. Um, we have the agreements with the, uh, the, the WCBs I talked about in, at the beginning. Well, those, those w, bilateral agreements were signed and agreed upon in the 90s for most of them. Um, just to give you an idea, in the 90s, um, it was the beginning of the internet. <laughs> uh, I first used the web, I think, in 95 or 96 on a modem 14.4 uh, phone line where uh, my wife could not use, the, uh, my wife could not use the, the phone at the same time. So this is when those agreements were signed. Um, and, and, and I mean, with all, I, I mentioned the new people working with FWCS from, from the minister to, to my team. And uh, it is the right opportunity to modernize and to assume the leadership that uh, the labor program should assume based on the responsibility of the minister and responsibility for the JICA. So where we are and where we want to go, okay? So this is basically the future state of, of, uh, of operations. 
we're, we're currently still working mostly on the paper-based, and we want to move to e-submissions. Uh, where we are now, we are in the middle. As I mentioned when I explained the role and responsibilities of FWCS, we are in the middle where between the employers and WCBs. Well, we, we want to assume more leadership there and move mostly to an education awareness position where we can help on both sides of the spectrum. Um, we, as I said, we, uh, we, it takes longer to report injuries and illnesses uh, we want to comply with the, the provincial uh, time limits. And uh, align with service providers, we want to be client-centric service. Okay, so this is where, from an operational perspective, we want to go. So as we talk, I talk about modernization, the first one is to work from a role of administrator to one of enabler. Uh, and you see there a spectrum, you know, reactive transactional, uh, service structure around WCB's passive intervention. Um, we're now at the regulator uh, level, moving to the enabler, partner with client departments. I'll mention it later. Uh, assist with the needs, identify problems, be more strategic. So moving from a, an administrative role to a more strategic role, thinking ahead and trying to get all the players together. And this is the leadership that we need to, uh, to assume. Modernization Initiative 2, uh, new service agreement with WCBs. Uh, I mentioned uh, that they were signed in the 90s. Uh, where, and and uh, it's funny because I looked at the one we have with Nova Scotia this morning. And it's very short. It's about, I don't know, maybe six, eight pages. It's, it looks like it was, it was uh, typed with a typewriter, uh, just to give you an idea, with a Courier 12 font. When is the last time you use a Courier 12 font? You know, so so those are, this is the agreement we have right now. It's still working well, but we, it needs to be modernized. Um, so we are working with all the, so what we, sorry, what we've done is that uh, about a year ago, we contacted all the WCBs to tell them that Okay, we have this new leadership, we need, we need to move forward, so we want to negotiate new agreements with you. And um, uh, because of our capacity, we could not deal with 10 at the same time. So we started to focus with four, uh, including the uh, WCB of Nova Scotia, to work on an agreement, okay? And, and change, change the type of agreement that we had, where the first one was very, the current one actually, is, was very uh, technical, we want to move from a very technical to a more practical, uh, to, um, to, to, to um, more principle-based, um, and that is similar to all the boards. So what we have there, the new agreements we're working on, is a, uh, you have a principle-based framework uh, that's, that is focused on the partnership and where we want to go there. And then you have specific appendices um, that can be tailored based on the specificity or the obligations or responsibilities of each WCBs. Um, and, and, and what you have there on the last bullet, uh, it's, it's new modern governance. Uh, we want to, to improve outcomes by leveraging modern technology and have a better performance matrix. So it's it's one end when you report, and the, the, end, the other end when you, when you get the data and you can see how we did with this. So the goal there, as I said, okay, you have the appendices that are uh, specific to each WCB based on, on what they want, based on their responsibility. For example, here in Nova Scotia, uh, WCB in Nova Scotia is responsible or for occupational health and safety. So this is something we're gonna work with them because it's also part of the uh, labor program in, in Ottawa. And with regards to the framework agreement, the goal there is to have not identical, but a similar agreement across the country. So as I said here, uh, I, I, I talk about this slide, framework agreement. So uh, it's it, it, to establish a new agreement that is consistent across the WCBs, outlines roles, respons responsibilities, obligation, terms and condition, administration of uh, federal workers' compensation. Um, so I can move to the first appendix. So first appendix, claim administration. So 
we do things for a number of years uh, between us and the WCBs, and you know, as part of our modernization, as part of moving to an enabler, an enabler role, our goal is to, to ask ourselves, okay, we've been doing this for 10, 15 years. There was a reason why we were administrating like this, our operations. Um, there, there was a reason why we were doing this with WCBs. Is it still the case? So as part of claim administration, this is what we're, we have started with WCBs. Is, okay, okay, this is what was written. This is how we do it. So let's, let's modernize. Let's update all these this practices that we have. Where do you want to go? Uh, for example, with the, the uh, WCB of uh, British Columbia, you know, we're not there yet, but we already put in, on the, in the agreement where we want to go. Uh, knowing that when we'll sign it, when we'll put it into force, that it, it will, will get there. Um, financial arrangement. So I, I, you know, at the beginning I mentioned that uh, we reimburse WCBs for the costs and services that they, they, uh, they were responsible for, and then we, we invoice the, the departments. Um, our goal there is, okay, we want to be transparent with our bosses, uh, they want to know what are we paying for. Uh, we want to pay our fair share. That means we don't want to subsidize anyone, and we don't want anybody to subsidize the federal government neither. So, uh, so it's just to be clear, on, transparent on we pay for what. And you know, going through negotiations, what what we want to do there is we work with WCBs to look at are there some services we're not using, and we don't mind paying for them, but we want to get them. We want to use all the services uh, as part of the, uh, the cost so that people can go back to work as soon as possible. Um, exchange of information. Um, in today's world, I would say this is one of the most important appendix that we have as part of the, the new agreements. Um, in today's technology, um, we you have all this data going around, yeah, and people are very careful, and people are, are actually uh, aware that their personal data is moving around. Um, this is not exclusive for the, the federal government or for the, the public administration. Uh, two weeks ago, I was with a bunch of friends uh, who were working in the private sector in, on, the IT, on IT systems, and they had the same problem in the same, uh, or the same not the same problem, the same issue, challenges in the private sector. They want, they need to protect personal information. So this is a very important uh, appendix for us at uh, ESDC, for the federal uh, the labor program. There were some breach of information in the past, so uh, our department is very careful with this. We have very little latitude there to, to move with the, the framework that we have. And I must say, after discussing with, uh, with some WCBs, it is the same across the country. Every, all the provinces have similar acts now and are aware of those issues. Technology. So, uh, you know, and this is to refer to what I said earlier, you know, that when the agreement was signed, we're using modem with uh, phone lines. And uh, why is technology important? Well, to, to quote the new prime minister, because it's 2015. <laughs> and uh, we need to make sure that we use the tools that are possible. Uh, we need to make sure that we use them correctly. And then it will, we, that will help the faster and secure transmission of, of protected information. And our goal there, knowing that, you know, we, we might be the federal government, but we represent a very small volume of each WCBs, between 2 and 4% of their volume. And so it's to work with them, work with uh, their systems that they have, and see how they, what they can, we can use what they already have. It's, it's not to create a brand new world there. So the, the last one is uh, data for monitoring, reporting, and performance assessment. And Paula from Canada Post earlier this morning mentioned that the, the importance of data, it, it's important to understand what the data is telling us. So we need this data. We need this data to, to assess ourselves, uh, work with WCBs, work individually with employers if, if there are challenges, to know, better, to know better our business, to know better our outcomes, 
and to see where we need to target to help uh, employees go back to work as soon as possible. The results, of course, uh, will have a better workforce. Uh, we'll have key performance indicators from across the country. Um, of course, better financial integrity and controls because we'll have this, this appendix on, on, um, on, on cost. Uh, improved client relationship, because we have established a uh, bilateral relationship with, or, and, and, or enhanced bilateral relationship with all WCBs. For example, um, uh, Jennifer, Maggie, and I are spending the whole week in the Maritimes. Uh, we met uh, last week in, in St. John. That's St. John's. And... Uh, <laughs> St. John's, and we're very impressed by our meeting with uh, uh, WCBNL. It was a great meeting. Nine, nine people were there, and we had very good discussion on, with regards to our, um, their systems and, and, and the, the agreement. Uh, back in, so we were spending the week, tomorrow we're in Charlottetown, we're in St. John, not no S, uh, on Friday, and we'll have, so we'll, we'll cover everyone. Back in uh, August, Maggie and I traveled out west and we met with all the, all the WCBs to make sure that we have this relationship. So, uh, uh, improved client relationship. I'll move to the employers in the next slides. Uh, and modernized streamlined business processes will be in 2015, hopefully, when we'll have signed those, those new agreements. So I, I talked a lot about the WCBs, our relationship with them. We also work at the other end of the spectrum. Working with the employers, you know, we have a re regional uh, uh, rep here, but in Ottawa, we're working with the national headquarters of those, uh, those departments, those employers. And uh, so we have established a, a forum, the uh, Interdepartmental Consultation Committee, started about a year ago, and uh, we're trying to, to meet with them uh, on a monthly basis, except when there's a, an electoral campaign. Uh, <laughs> Uh, who are they? Well, they are a dozen, maybe 15 employers, the main GCA users. So all of you in the room are probably represented on, the, on that committee. Um, so they represent about, I think, 85% of, of all the GCA claims across the country. And we are working very closely with them. We like working with them, and I think they, they like the, the, uh, the, the partnership and the leadership we are assuming. Uh, I talked about my team who's on the web right now. I'm looking at this camera again because there's probably at least a dozen departments that are watching also on the web right now. And they were pleased that because, of, of, uh, of, uh, because it's, it's hard to, to travel these days that this, this technology was available so they could participate through their uh, computer uh, to, this, to this session today. So we're working very closely with them. And, um, you know, we, 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 we keep them up to date on the, our negotiations or, uh, you know, how, how, what we are discussing with WCBs. And on the other side, they tell us, you know, Jean-Francois or, or Maggie or Jennifer, this is, what we, this is the issues that we have. Can you look into this? So we're working with both sides. When I talk about, you know, moving from administrator to more strategic role, this is exactly what we want to do. So moving forward, um, we'll continue to work on our harmonization uh, exercise. We hope to have some agreements, uh, new service agreements signed before the, the end of the fiscal year. We're well advanced with, with uh, in BC, in Alberta, here in Nova Scotia too. And uh, we look forward to work with all the, the WCBs on those agreements. So uh, that, that will help with early intervention, uh, enhance focus stay at work, return to work, modified work, through our discussion and through a review of all the research that was done with, within the, um, the labor program, we've learned that, yeah, you know, administrative costs, that's, that's, that's 20, 25, 30% of your total cost, but we're, you, know, you can make big savings if you, if you get people back to work, of, if they stay at work. This is where the, uh, the most of the savings will be. Accountability, we want to be able to say, this is how we spend, this is what we spend it on. And of course, education awareness. That's where, this is where we want to go in, in the future. Uh, want continue to work with WCBs, federal employers, 
Uh, and, and within the labor program itself, uh, for example, occupational health and safety, which is part of the, our, um, our uh, ADM portfolio. Um, and and I, I would end by saying that, you know, when, when we see partnership, it's like when, when a new boss comes in and he says, my door is always open. And, uh, but then, you know, you, cannot, you can never talk to him. So when we talk about partnership, leadership, uh, I would say that, and I'm talking for, for Jennifer and Maggie, um, it, it is not a cliche here. Uh, for us, it's, it's a commitment. Uh, we're ready to work with, with everyone. And the, the, the nicest thing, one of the nicest things we heard is when we were in, out west and uh, someone from a WCB told uh, Maggie and I, uh, Maggie and Jean-Francois, you've done more in three, one, three months than I've seen in 17 years. So I think, I think we're, we're moving forward in a good re direction and uh, looking forward to, to work with everyone here. And uh, the presentation is in your package. We have a French version if anyone wants to have it. And you have our, um, our email and phone numbers there. Okay, I'm ready to take questions. Jennifer is there if you have any question too. Or uh, feel free to, to send us emails with a specific question if you have any. Thank you.